What are you going to do? Ernest. Ernest. Yes? Oh, hello, Dr. Goodman. Are you upstairs? Plenty of time. I'll meet you in the hall. Oh, just a minute, please. What's that, dear? I'll tell him. Of course he'll understand. Doctor, my wife wants me to apologize for her. She can't join us. She, she's not feeling very well. She's been suffering from headaches lately. She's sorry, too. Right, come on down. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Warren. Hello, Dr. Goodman. You, you stepping out? Hmm. Medical Society banquet. As if the food weren't torture enough, we have to listen to Dr. Tyndall make a speech on how to live to a ripe old age. <laughs> I'm sorry I kept you waiting. What time is it? Ten past eight. Mrs. Tyndall has another one of those headaches. Oh. And when she gets them... <laughs> I know exactly what would cure her. But <laughs> I guess you'd know too, being a doctor. <laughs> well, I'll stop off at the drugstore and have a prescription sent up. It won't take a minute. Well, I don't think her headache can be so bad if she can stand the racket of that radio. Racket? Well, oh, Mrs. Ward, that's crooning. That's supposed to be soothing. <laughs> soothing? Talk about you until it's absurd. Talk about you, but when you are near me, you don't say a word to show you her. I've tried every way that I can think of. Now what is Ella for me to do? I'll have to send you a talk. Everyone knows it but you. How much will you guys charge to haunt a house for me? I smell a reporter. There's a rumor that the cops in this town are going to be pinched for vagrancy. Are you here again? Say, but where's Mike? 
Inside. What's he doing? Personal business. Do I know it? Hey, do you think all Mac does is to chase skirts? That's all. He never catches up with one. Why don't you knock? Might wake him up. Ferranberry, pond of sandy, for time weary, for my dearie. For I'd rather lose me stripes than lose me dead, gee. Would you like the evening paper? Wisconsin, 70026. Yeah, hurry up, it's important. Hello. Hello, Daisy. Hi, babe. Well, this is Kirk. Kirk, the vagabond lover. Yeah. Hey, so listen, sweetheart, how'd you like to step out with me tonight, huh? Well, Mac? No, he can't make it, baby. Yeah, he asked me to phone you and tell you he's sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wants me to bat for him. You mean it, honey? Say, Daisy, how'd you come to make a date with that flat foot in the first place? Gotta hang up, honey. City editor. Call you later. Oh, you were shaving. Why didn't you say so? My pal. I suppose you're all right, playing peeping Tom on me. If they had a decent police force in this town, I'd report you. I ought to take a suck at you, stealing my girl. What do you mean, your girl? Didn't I pick her up? Weren't we riding in my car? Ah, success. Lay off. That's evidence. I got it in a ring. Oh, be a sport, Mac. You only need two ounces for evidence. And Daisy's one speedboat that won't chug unless she's well oiled. All you'll get out of me is the air. Come on, vagabond lover. Vagabond. Okay, Captain. I'm covering you right at the Columbine Club. Maybe I can talk the boys into giving me a couple of bottles of evidence. Now, if a good man, I'd tip off the club. My pal. You said it. Am I keeping you from something? Hmm? Then she doesn't mind your being late. She? You can't fool me. There's no hurry. I'll take you home. Don't bother. I can take a cab. Sure you don't mind? Of course not. Run along, dear. I know I wouldn't want to be kept waiting. Thanks, sis. You're a darling. Good night. Good night. Hello. Taxi, please. Here's a cab. No, no, no. This cab's taken. Bye. Pardon me, I thought you were getting out. Huh? No, no, I'm just getting in. Drive on. You're right, I am getting out. Uh, call me a cab, please. What is it? I'm from the drugstore, and I was supposed to deliver this in a hurry to Mrs. Tyndall. She doesn't answer the bell. That's 
no wonder. She couldn't possibly hear you with all that noise. I'll let you in. Thank you. Mrs. Tindall? She's probably in the bedroom. Mrs. Tindall? Oh! Why, well, she's fainted. Mrs. Tindall? Mrs. Tindall? She's dead. Oh! 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 oh. Police department! Quick! Hurry! What? It's okay, boy. Thank you, sir. Sarah. Yes, dear? Did you see anybody you know on the way home tonight? No, why? Oh. Frank, what's troubling you? Listen, sis. If anybody ever asks you about tonight, we left the club together. And I came directly home with you. What's happened, Frank? You can tell me. What have you done? I haven't done anything, but something has happened. Frank. Dara, you must believe me. You must. Of course I do. No matter what happens, I never left you for a minute tonight. And we got home at 8.30 exactly. Understand? Well, you take the front door and don't let anybody in or out, right? Duffy, you and Brown go through the house and see what you can find. Yes, Mac. And keep out of that icebox. Well, you know me, Mac. I don't ever go in any... No, not much. <laughs> what are you doing, Doc? Falling in love? Now, come on, come on, what did she dial? I can't say definitely. Seems she was strangled to death. It seems. Why, the guy almost took her tonsils out. No, her tonsils were taken out last March. What a great help you're gonna be. Know this guy, Dr. Tyndall? Know him? Why, he's the psychiatrist consulted in the Lee case, remember? Oh, yeah. Say, what's he like personally? Well, chap, square guy. They call him Chickle. Chickle? Yes, nickname. He's always chewing gum, even when he operates. Gum? Yes. And I thought I had a swelled clue. Bullseye. You can't come in here, Kurt. Honest, you can't. Who says I can? Max says so. You tell Mike to go cook a goose, or vice versa. Hey. What Max says goes for those boys, though. Hey, hey, Mike. Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you? Hi. So I can go vice versa, can I? Sure. But there's no hurry about it. So the great detective's on the job, huh? I thought you had a date with Daisy. The boys refused to give me the evidence after the raid. No scotch, no Daisy. No Daisy, no date. <laughs> That's too bad. Yeah, I know you'd be sorry. Yeah, what are you doing here anyhow? My office told me there was a story here. Of course, you wouldn't tip a pal off, would you? What have you found, big boy? Well, I've only been here a few minutes. Oh, well, no arrest? Oh, Mac, you're slowing up, see? Yeah, just enough to keep ahead of you. And if you don't behave yourself, there'll be two bodies for the coroner to examine. Ah, uh -huh. listen, Mac. You could kill me yourself, and you wouldn't have sense enough to find out who did it. I ought to take a sub at you. Oh, please, not here. Come here, lady. And sink your hips in that chair and answer my questions. Now, lady, if I... Mrs. Elvira Ward is my name. I'm a widow. My husband died five years ago from a nervous breakdown. I can understand that. Sir? Oh, Keep out of this. Now, do you know anyone who might have killed Mrs. Tyndall? No, sir. And I think it's outrageous, too. Something ought to be done about it. Yeah. Why don't you do something about it, Mac? What the devil do you think I'm doing? Sir? 
What time did... Now, if you want to ask questions, you better turn off that radio. Nobody's going to touch anything until the coroner gets here. Hi, Doc. Hello, Kirk. Well, too much necking, huh? You would call it that. Not bad looking. But I like women better in nightgowns, don't you, Doc? Haven't you any respect for the dead? Sure. But I still don't like pajamas on women. What time did Dr. Tyndall leave? At ten minutes past eight. I met him in the hall. I was talking to Dr. Goodman. Who's he? Oh, a wonderful throat specialist. He's going to take my tonsils out next month. Lady, I don't care a hoot about your tonsils. Did you hear any funny noises after Dr. Tyndall left? Only the radio. Are you trying to be funny? No, nope, sir. Well, did you see anybody come in or go out? No one. And my office is right across the hall, and if anyone had come in, I'd have seen them. Well, somebody must have gotten into this apartment. Maybe it was Santa Claus, and he came down the chimney. Kirk, cut it out now. I mean it. I mean it. Of course, he might have come through the window. Well, we'll have a look at those windows. No, you don't. Give it here. Hello. Yeah. Hold on. Somebody wants to talk to the village idiot. <laughs> you can't talk to Captain McKinley now. He's busy. He's in conference. Hello, Mullins. Yeah, enough for the first edition. Murder. Mrs. Ruth Tyndall. T-I-N-D-A-L. No, no, D. D, as in Daisy. Mrs. Tyndall was a bad girl. Maybe not so bad. She passed out in her pajamas, but I think she'd look hotter in a nightgown. Nobody came through there. While waiting for a bedtime story, her throat got caught in her sweetheart's fingers. Did she have one? She was 25, and her husband's 50. Write your own story. Call you later. Leave it to a newspaper man to make it dirty. Why, nothing even indicates a sweetheart. This baby was killed either by someone who loved her fiercely or hated her fiercely. I'm not so sure. Absolutely. They wouldn't have strangled her otherwise. He would have used some less intimate method. Say, do you read palms as well as tell fortunes? Yeah, sure. Perhaps you can tell me the size of his hat. Or what's his favorite fruit? I can tell you his favorite fruit. Forbidden. Oh! Your ashes. Sorry. Hey, wait a minute. You ought to know better than to touch anything around here. Why, that candy might be poison. Well, if it is, I'm in a swell spot to find out. Look it over, Doc. I'm sorry, you can't come in here. What do you mean? This is my house. I'm Dr. Tyndall. Oh, I beg your pardon. Will you make a Back. stand, Doctor? Outside. Outside. I'm going to get the story. Mrs. Ward, what's happening? In there. Ruth. Ruth. Steady, Doctor, steady. Ruth. Only a few hours ago, she was alive. Alive. May I? Yeah. Well, Doctor, I'm Captain McKinley from headquarters. What have you found out about this? Nothing. Can you tell us anything? No, it's just terrible, that's all. Know of anyone who might have had reason for this? I can't conceive of any motive unless robbery. Couldn't be robbery. 
There's too much jewelry left untouched. Maybe some strange visitor you know nothing about, Doctor. I don't like your implication. That's funny. What's funny? My wife's photograph. It's gone. Mine too. Yeah, that is funny. Mine doesn't matter, but my wife's picture. Kirk is a boy here from your office. Said he came with some photographs. Oh, it must be some mistake. I'll see what it's all about. I'm sorry, but I can't allow it. I can't have my wife's pictures used for sensational purposes. But, Doctor, I'm a... Hand him over, Kirk. You're holding everything up. Thanks. Daisy thanks you, too. Doc, what time did you leave the house? About ten minutes past eight. Exactly? Yes, I, I happened to ask Dr. Goodman the time. We know your wife was dead at nine o'clock, but we don't know she was alive at ten past eight. Now, can you prove she was alive then? Offhand, no, I'm afraid I can't. I thought so. I was talking to Dr. Goodman over the phone. He may have heard me speak to my wife. But that, of course, isn't proof. I'll say it isn't. Dr. Tindall, I'm Maybe afraid Dr. I... Dr. Tindall can't prove that she was alive when he left, but I can. You can? How? By the radio. When Dr. Tindall came out of the apartment, the radio was not turned on. It was not turned on until afterwards. That right? Yes, I recall it now. And when it was turned on, I remarked that your wife's headache couldn't be so very bad if she could stand the radio. Yes, no doubt Dr. Goodman will remember that, too. What time was the radio turned on? Two or three minutes after Dr. Tindall came out. Thank you, Mrs. Ward. You're welcome. Hey, Mick, we just found some fresh fingerprints on the doorknob of the back door. All right, get them out. And I thought I told you to keep out of that ice box. Now, you know me, Mac. I... That's from lunch. You don't know where I can find a screwdriver, do you? No, I do not. What for? To get the fingerprints off. Have you gone crazy? Send for a photographer. That's curious. What? That ribbon on the window shade. Isn't it supposed to be there? I never saw it before. Yeah, it must mean something. But what? That answer might be the answer to everything, if it's a signal. Signal? Yeah, to let someone know that the coast is clear. Oh, it can't be true. It's not what you mean. <coughs> What's that? <coughs> I, I say, you'll come right in here. No. Come on, Brown, drag her in. You dirty palookas. We found her sneaking in from the alley. Who is she? Why, it's Mrs. Alvin, the Tyndall's cook. A fighting cook, eh? Yes. Yeah. Why did you kill Mrs. Tindall? Say, who is this fat head? Ha! She knows you, Mac. Dead? Yeah. What do you know about it? Well, I know plenty. She had it coming to her, too. Mrs. Elvin. Oh, Doctor, you don't know what's been going on here behind your back. What's been going on? That fine lady always had her headaches the night you were away from home. And she sent me away, too. Ever seen a man with her? No, but I heard a man's voice. And it wasn't yours. Whose was it? I don't know. I didn't see him. That's why I came back tonight. Just as I thought. The oldest story in the world. Well, it's new to me. Take her, Duffy. Say, do you know where I can find a screwdriver? Well, Doctor, now we're going places. Seems your wife had a lover. Yeah. Ask me another. Never mind the pussy, Kirk. Hey, Sully, how long does it take for rigor mortis to set in? I thought you knew everything. How long, Sully? From four to eight hours, according to condition. Well, take a look at her hand. Looks like she's holding something. Well, let's have a look. Ah! Uh, mustn't touch anything till the coroner comes. Have I got to throw you out of here? Ah, finders, keepers. What is it? Just a little piece of iron. With a gold clasp on it. Could it be a watch charm, like yours? Maybe. Doesn't look like a watch charm. You don't look like a moron either, but, uh... I don't know why I should help you out with your job, but I will. Oh, so you're leaving us, are you? 
That'll be swell. You ever see that before? No. Nope. Look, Flatfoot. That charm was torn off the murderer's watch chain. Come here, here. Put your hands around my throat as if you were choking. Come on. Boy, how I'd love to do it, too. Come on, come on, now, here. Come here. Now, listen. You're choking her, and she's fighting you off. In the struggle, she grabs your watch charm. There you are. That's all there is to it. Ah, that's a lot of hooey. Your theory's all right, but it wouldn't work out that way. Well, in that case, I'll give you back your watch charm. I was a surgeon during the war. The boys often asked for the bullets or shell fragments that were extracted from their wounds. Souvenirs, you know. Some of them did make watch charms out of them. This is a shell fragment. How about it, Sully? Looks like it. Mm. Now you're going places, Mac. I had a hard time finding a screwdriver, Mac. What did you want with a screwdriver? To get you the fingerprints. I never thought I'd find a cop dumber than a reporter. A man's all right. Did you go out that door, Doctor? Oh, I never use it. I don't know what you do without me, Mac. Now you know she was murdered by her lover, who was a soldier, wounded during the war. And you got his fingerprints. Yeah, but what good are they? Unless we got them on file. If I remember rightly, the army took fingerprints of every soldier during the war. By golly, you're right, Doctor. They must be on file in Washington. Al! Yeah? Get these fingerprints photographed. Take the train to Washington immediately and find out from the War Department who they are. And telephone me as soon as you know. Understand? Right. Mac, you got them. Sure I got him. He's in the bag. I want to see the murderer caught. I'm willing to offer a $5,000 reward. Well, if you want it, Doctor, sure, but it isn't necessary. I want to. Give me a circle, two, two, two hundred. Make it snappy. Hey, what are you doing? Giving Mullins the story. What about the charm, the watch charm? Well, it's news, ain't it? Yes, to the murderer, if he can read. Why, you take the first train out of town. Give me the city desk. Now listen, Kirk, be reasonable. Am I in? In what? The reward? The five grand? Sure, baby. 50 50. Oh, sweetheart. No, 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 not you. Nothing new in the Tyndall case. Call you back. My pal. You said it. Give me long distance. <coughs> Boy, that's rotten stuff. Whew. Lay off. That's evidence. Why don't you get your boys to pinch a decent joint sometimes? Why don't you buy your own? I will when I get my half of the reward. Say, what are you going to do with your two and a half grand? Pay back alimony. Haven't you paid that yet? Oh, how could I? I haven't had the money. Well, what do you do with your salary? You certainly don't spend it on Daisy. She's got a nerve. I've been pretty nice to her. Nice? Oh. You don't even know how to talk to a dame. I don't. No. The minute you meet a dame, you say, sit down. What's your name? Where do you live? You don't talk to her. You cross-examine her. Listen, you cut-rate Romeo. Someday I'm going to take a suck at you. Hello? Ah, that's my private wire. Lay off. Get me? Hello. Have you well? Yeah. Good. You got it. Shoot. Lieutenant Frank C. Marsh. Marsh. Wounded in Argonne. Okay. Good work, Al. What's up, Mac? Nothing that'll interest you. Listen, Flatfoot, that's the throat ringer you're gonna tap. What of it? Duffy? Listen, Mac, what do you got? Come on, what do you got? Ask Daisy. She knows all the answers. All right, I will. Tomorrow, at breakfast. Get the dope on this guy. Get his business and home address. Okay.
like to speak to Mr. Marsh. He's not in. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. Will anyone else do? Huh? I don't know. Uh, let me see your bill of fare. All right, Emma. Hello. You remember me? I'm afraid I don't. I'm the fellow who gave you that taxi at the Columbine Club. Is that why you're calling? Not exactly. I'm the inquiring reporter. Each day I ask six people a question. And their answers, together with their pictures, are printed in the paper. Silly way to make a living, isn't it? Why? Ah, but honest. Now, today's question is, what would you do if you saw your girl making love to another fellow? Are you asking me that? Oh, lady, please. Naturally, I would ask a man that question. Is your husband home? I have no husband. Is your father home? I have no father. Is your brother home? I have no brother. <laughs> please. I have a brother, but he's not at home. Oh, that's too bad. Miss Marsh, you can do me a great big favor, if you will. What? Well, you see, I have only five pictures today. Well? Could you let me have a picture of your brother? I'll answer that silly question myself. Hey, this would be fine. That isn't my brother. This is. Oh, pardon me, my error. I'm sorry, but you can't take that without asking my brother's permission. Well, I only need it for a little while. Mr. Marsh live here? Yes, but he's not in now. All right, I'll wait for him. Well, I'll be... Every time there's a police case, you're always around stealing pictures. One of these days, I'm gonna pinch you. Ah, uh, you couldn't pinch yourself to keep awake, copper. Police case? Captain McKinley of the Detective Bureau. What do you want with my brother? Oh, nothing important, miss. Just a chat. I'm expecting Frank any minute now. That must be he. I'll let him in. Wait a moment, miss. He's got a key, hasn't he? Why, yes, of course. Well, he'll find his way in all right. Frank. Are you Mr. Frank C. Marsh? Yes. Ever in the army? During the war. Wounded? Slightly. Mr. Marsh, I'll have to take you down to the station. Station? What's the big idea? I wouldn't talk much. Plenty of time for that. My brother hasn't done anything, I'm sure. Please, sir, please. Sorry to cause you any alarm, miss. But everything will be all right, I'm sure. Ready? Now, don't worry, sis. There's no reason to be upset. I'll see you later. So that's why you wanted my brother's picture. You knew about this all the time. Really, Miss Marsh, I didn't lie about it. I, well, after all, I... So you're the inquiring reporter. You must feel awfully proud of yourself. Miss Marsh, I didn't, I didn't mean to do your brother any harm, or you. Oh, no. Well, well, this ought to convince you. Oh. Thank you so much, Mr. Kirk, Kirk's the name. And uh, I'll even keep this out of the papers. Honest, I will. That's awfully nice of you, Mr. Kirk. Mr. Kirk's my father. Just call me Kirk. <clears throat> you might let me in on the secret. What's it all about? You'll find out. Imagine I will. Have you got that thing, Brown? You ever see that before? Well, is it yours? Unbutton your coat. Broke off right there, didn't it? I lost it. Where? Where'd you find it? Where'd you lose it? Columbine Club. When? Last Monday, while I was waiting for my sister. Jack Reed and his wife are with me. They'll prove it. Jack Reed, eh? A half-baked racketeer who'd swear to anything you'd say for a dollar. Pick up Jack Reed when you get back. Right. You're a pretty husky fellow, aren't you? Yeah. Strong? Yeah. Strong enough to strangle a woman? I don't know. I never tried. Mrs. Tyndall was strangled. Mrs. Tyndall? 
Yeah. Mrs. Tin. How were the fights last night, Brown? Oh, great. Who won? Kid Swanson. Yeah? Oh. Dr. Tyndall's here, Mac. Get Marsh. Are you going to show him to the doc? Sure, why not? Well, I wouldn't want to see the guy that killed my wife. That's because you've never been married. Marsh. Show Dr. Tyndall then. Now, I'll give you one more chance to come clean. Why did you kill Mrs. Tendall? I've told you before, I know nothing about it. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. You know him? No. Ever seen this man before, Doctor? No. Yeah? The reeds are here. Show them in. Duffy, outside. Reed naturally will back up everything Marsh says, if you question him too directly. Leave it to me, Doctor. There are tricks in this business, too. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mac. I've never had the pleasure of meeting your wife. Pleased to meet you. Thanks. You know Dr. Tyndall? How do you do? Glad to know you. Sit down. Guess you were wondering why I sent for you. No. Would you feel any better if I told you it isn't trouble for you? I feel all right now. Well, it isn't very serious, Jack. Just a dispute that has to be cleared up. Uh, do you know a man by the name of Frank C. Marsh? Why? He says he knows you. Yeah? Now, Reed. Marsh said he was with you at the Columbine Club Monday night. That right? Why? Was he or was he not? Did he say he was? Yes. That's right. And he said he told you he had another date later in the evening. Yes, that's what he says. That right? Yeah. Do you recognize this? That's his watch charm. Marsh says that you can prove that he wore this when he left the club. He says that? Quit stalling, Jack. I know he's got it all framed with you. I haven't seen him since that night. Why not come clean? Marsh lies when he said this was on his chain when he left the club. Not if he says it was. But I know for a fact Marsh lost this inside the Columbine Club. Yeah, but he found it again under the table. He did, eh? Yeah, and fastened it back on his chain. Well, I even saw him wearing it when he left. Duffy, bring in Marsh. Marsh. Come in, Marsh. Anything you want to ask Reed? Jack, do you remember last Monday night at the Columbine Club when I lost this watch charm? Yeah. And we hunted for it for five minutes and couldn't find it? <laughs> Jack, don't you remember? And you, Julia? I never could find it. That's dirty, Mac. <laughs> What's the matter, Reed? Don't you remember? This rat made me think that you were trying to prove just the opposite. I'm sorry, Marsh. Thanks. That's all, Reed. Outside. And don't leave town. I'll need you here as a witness. Just a smart copper. Do you still say you lost this watch charm at the Columbine Club? Yes. And I suppose it rolled around the corner right into Mrs. Tyndall's hand. Mrs. Tyndall's hand? That's where it was found. How do you account for that? Why, it must have been planted there. Yeah, planted by a farmer who expected corn. What time Monday night did you leave the Columbine Club? About five minutes after eight. Where did you go from there? Home. And got there what time? 8.30. Exactly. Exactly? Yes. I guess you can prove that, too. I can. By Jack Reed? No, not by Jack Reed. My sister. All right. We'll give her a chance. Wait a minute. Don't try to pull any of your tricks on her like you pulled on Reed. Duffy, outside. 
Very well done. The reed certainly fell for your trap. Just a little trick I sometimes use, Doctor. Duffy, bring Miss Marsh in. Miss Marsh. Come on out. Well, come on. What are you doing? Is that the guy whose voice you heard in the apartment? Yes, sir. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Are you ready to swear? What for? I ain't mad. Duffy. Outside. Say, what are we doing? Playing post office? That'll be all. How do you do, Miss Marsh? I'm glad to see you. How do you do? Dr. Tyndall. How do you do? Sit down. Will you please tell me where you were Monday evening? Why, I... I was at the Columbine Club. Alone? No, with my brother. What time did you leave the club? At 8 o'clock. We got into a taxi and went home. We got home at 8.30. Is that what your brother told you to say? Why, no, of course not. Yes, it is. He framed his alibi with you. No, no. He did. I tell you, he didn't. And I tell you, he did. Well, well, just a lot of busy bees. A little honey here, a little honey there. And sugar all around. You can't go in there, Kirk. Why not? What's playing inside? It's the Marsh case. Little sister's getting what for and why. Sister? That big gorilla. Can we frame an alibi with you? Don't let him bully you, Miss Marsh. And look out for traps. He's tricky. Duffy, outside. Not in court, Miss Marsh. And you don't have to talk unless you want to. Get away. Oh, so you're throwing me down to get in good with her, are you? Miss Marsh refuses to answer any questions unless I'm here to protect her constitutional rights. You want me here, don't you? Sure you do. Yeah. If you want to stay here, sit down and keep your mouth shut. Can you prove that you left the Columbine Club Monday night at 8 o'clock? By my brother. And by me. You? Sure, I gave her my taxi. Yeah. You're just the type of guy who would butt in on a strange couple. She wasn't a couple, Egghead. She was all alone. Wait a minute. Alone when she left the club? Didn't I say so? Would you swear it? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, or what have you? <laughs> oh, boy, are you smart. Why, Miss Marsh has just said her brother drove home with her in that cab. What? Duffy, bring in Marsh. Gee, I'm sorry. Oh. Marsh, what a friend you turned out to be. Oh, Frank. Come up there. Now, Marsh, you haven't a leg to stand on. Your watch charm is I told you a hundred times that I know nothing about it. I left the club with my sister. No use, Marsh. A friend of your sister saw her leave the Columbine Club. And she was alone. Friend of my sister. But Frank went around the corner to the cigar stand. I picked him up there in the cab. It's no use, I tell you. You're only getting in deeper. Sit down. Marsh, you strangled that woman. I did not. And you weren't even smart about it. You opened the door with your bare hands. I did not. Why, I've got your fingerprints. No, no. He was with me all the time. I tell you, we drove home together. Shut up. When Dr. Tindall went out the front door, you came in the back door. I did not. Yes, you did. And you turned on the radio. I did not. The radio was on. Frank. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to make a confession now? Nothing to confess. I told you the truth. Yeah? Bind Marsh over to the district attorney's office. I'll sign the complaint. Marsh, I warn you, anything you say will be used against you. Duffy, outside. I didn't kill her, Vera. I swear I didn't. She was dead when I got there. I believe you, Frank. 
Never mind, Miss Marsh. I'll take care of everything. Mac, you can't do this. Well, I'm doing it, ain't I? Did I laugh when you spilled the apple? And you'd better stick to the daisies and leave girls like Miss Marsh alone. If you think you can railroad this boy to jail, you're crazy. I'll throw you out of this office. Hey, look out, you don't get thrown out of this office yourself. There isn't anybody around here could do it. I throw you into this office. You and who else? Me and my little paper. Since when have you been the editor? I don't have to be the editor. He can't write. I can. And what's more, I'm going to show you that you can't have your way all the time. I'm going to get my whole paper behind this and help Miss Marsh prove her brother's innocence. Oh, if you only could. Could? I will. And don't you be afraid of that gorilla, the big lug. My pal. You said it. Well, I'm a... Well, w Mr. Cack. Hello, Mac. What's the matter with you? You don't come around anymore. I'm too busy. Chasing skirts? With my job. What are you now, the society editor? Just because I have a new suit? Oh, boy, and what a suit. <laughs> Not so snappy as the $18 model with the extra pair of pants. Vera likes it. Has Daisy seen it? I'll bet she hasn't even seen you. Oh, boy. I wish you'd get a load of this horse blanket and the clean shirt and the shoe shine tootsies. Does a guy have to be a tramp all his life? But you were such a swell tramp. Listen, copper, I haven't changed and I never will. Not much. Hello, Miss Marsh. Hello. How do you do, Miss Marsh? How do you do? I was thinking of calling on you. Unofficially, of course. That's very nice of you, Captain. Yeah? I thought there might be something I could do for you. You believe my brother guilty of this crime, don't you? I do. In that case, there's nothing you can do for Miss Marsh, Captain. I ought to take a sock at you. If you were a man... I am. But Daisy won't tell. It is the judgment of this court that you be remanded to the custody of the sheriff of the county to be taken by him to the warden of the state penitentiary and to be by him hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may God have mercy upon your soul.
I'm sorry. I just haven't got any nerve left. Well, I've got nerve enough for a dozen, so they tell me. Besides, we've still got 15 hours. I don't know what I'd do without you. Ah, oh, no, don't worry. We're not out yet. They may have started the count, but the bell might save us. You say things I don't understand. All I know is that there's hope and comfort in your words. Who? Kirk? Yeah, he's around here somewhere. Ah, oh, quit your beeping. Why, he's the best cockeyed reporter you got. And say, listen, lay off this wire. It's private. He ain't been around here for weeks. I can't tell his boss that. What's got into that guy, Kirk, lately? Why, it's that Marsh day. He always was a sucker for a pretty face. Yeah? Dr. Kendall's here. Show him in. Good evening. Glad to see you, Doc. Sit down. I just thought I'd drop in and give you a check for that reward. Oh, there's no hurry, Doc. You certainly earned it. <laughs> Thanks. You know, I'm splitting this with Kirk. You going to Marsh's execution in the morning? No. It's my job to send these guys to the gallows, but I don't like to see them swing. Especially at six o'clock in the morning. Under the law, I have a right to witness the execution, haven't I? Yeah, if you like that sort of thing. Ordinarily, no. But I feel I ought to, in this case. All right, you can go with Sally. Al, get Doc a pass for the hanging. This way, Doctor. Mr. Kirk, I believe, or am I mistaken? You're staying here for the weekend? Or just overnight? Never mind the wisecracks. Now listen, Mac. Young Marsh has only a few hours to live unless you help. How many times must I You've tell you? You've got to help me. You've got to. Miss Marsh, only the governor can help. Well, won't you call the governor? He'll listen to you. That's the only way we can get a reprieve. You know I can't do that. The jury said he's guilty, and so does the governor. And that lets me out. Oh, by the way, uh, Dr. Tyndall paid the reward. Where shall I send your half? My half? I don't want any part of it. Oh, no? No. Now, listen, dear, will you excuse me a minute? I want to talk to Mac alone. I'll leave you a second. Now, listen, you big cluck. I want you to get on that phone, call the governor, and get the young marshal reprieve. Kirk, I'm tired of your interference, see? You know as well as I do that Marsh is guilty. I'm not so sure of it. Why, you never doubted until this girl came along. I like pretty faces, too. But a pretty face isn't sufficient evidence for me to set aside a conviction of murder. Gee, but you've changed. I never thought you'd run out on me like this. You, my pal. Now, listen, kid. I do anything for you, but this is impossible. Mac, that girl really and truly believes that her brother's innocent. She does, eh? And do you? Now, no kidding. Between you and me, do you believe he's innocent? No. No. I should have known it. You don't care a hoot about Marsh. It's little sister that you're hot about. Mac. That slimy Kirk. Trying to use me and the girl's brother. Careful, Mac. Don't say it. Well, I do some rotten things. But I'm hanged if I'm low enough to play on the misery of a helpless girl just to make her. Why, you? Hit me, will you? <coughs> oh, gee, Kirk. I'm sorry. Kirk, <coughs> I must have been crazy. Mac, do it again. Do it again. Have you gone crazy? Mac? Frank Marsh is innocent. He's what? He's innocent, I tell you. What the? See? Look at your hands. Anything wrong? Dr. Tyndall, I'm going to prove to you that Frank Marsh didn't kill your wife. No, then who did? I don't know who did, but Frank Marsh didn't. How do you know he didn't? What convicted Marsh was the watch charm found in Mrs. Tyndall's hand, right? Yes. On the theory that she grabbed it while he was choking her. Well, isn't that exactly what happened? No, I'll show you what happened. What's the matter with him? Must be the heat. Miss Marsh, step in here a minute, please. Where did I find him? Wait a minute. Sit down, dear. Now, don't interfere. Ah! Forgive me if I hurt you. There's your proof, Doc. Miss Marsh trying to pull my hands from her throat so she can breathe. Don't you see it? 
Mrs. Tindall wouldn't have grabbed at the watch chain, but at the wrist. Yes, but if I remember right, you were the guy that advanced that watch charm theory. Well, can I help it if I'm dumb? You're a detective. You're supposed to use your brains. You see? I was right after all. Sure you're right. You're always right. Didn't you say it wouldn't work out that way? You bet I did. Sure you did. Oh, gosh, what steps we have been. Frank Marsh is not only innocent, but he's framed. That watch charm was planted in Mrs. Tyndall's hand. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. You'll save Frank now. You will get the reprieve, won't you? Get the governor on the phone. Oh. Right, Kirk's theory's all right, but you forget one thing, McKinley. What's that? Marsh says he had his watch charm shortly before the murder. How is it possible for it to be planted, as he says? One person could have gotten that watch charm, and only one. Who is that? Jack Reed. Of course. Reed was with him when he lost it. Reed stole that charm. But Marsh had it when he left Reed that night. So Reed said. But you didn't even ask Reed what his movements were after he left Marsh. We were so sure of Marsh's guilt that we didn't think it necessary. Now you're going places, Mac. Where was Reed from the time the watch charm was lost until the murder was committed? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. All right, Mac, while you're getting Reed, I'll take Miss Marsh to the governor. With this new lineup, he's bound to give us a stay of execution. Go ahead. And pick up the district attorney on the way and tell him I'll have some new dope on this case within an hour. Make yourself at home, Doctor. Thanks, I will. Brown, Duffy, come on, we're going to play. But who is it? What do you want? Who's that? Just a minute. I don't know, but he says... Let me have it. Hello. Oh, hello, Doc. McKinley's on his way to pick you up. McKinley? Yes, serious. Better get out of town. Thanks, Doc. What's the matter, Jack? Somebody's tipped the glass. Max on his way here to tag. Max? Get the car. Bring it around to the side door. Are you sure then? Yeah, it came in by the Nautico. Where is it? Right here. Open it up. Duffy. You better stop unless you want heartburn. You got him, Mac. Your Excellency, don't just see the natural instinct is to reach for the wrists. <laughs> oh, the district attorney may laugh, but I know that Marsh is innocent. Well, what do you say? I repeat that no sufficient evidence to establish a reasonable doubt has been introduced. But couldn't you hold up the execution till you hear what Reed has to say? What Reed has to say was part of the evidence upon which Frank Marsh was convicted. I'm afraid, Miss Marsh, there's nothing I can do. But, but Your Excellency, Marsh is innocent, I tell you. I'll prove it to you. Now, look. Suppose, suppose, for instance, some, some maniac were to suddenly come toward you and do this. Here, what are you doing? Get what? away. Look at your hands, Your Excellency. Look at your hands. Well, Mrs. Tindall would never have grabbed for that watch charm. Some maniac is right. Show Mr. Kirk out. Yes, sir. Good night, Miss Moore. Well, that's that. Isn't there anything else we can do? We've still got a chance. Mac will make Reed talk yet. You don't know Mac. He's a swell fellow and a swell cop. And wait till that guy runs for governor again.
I know it's taking a chance, Doc. But you've got to come. He's in awful pain. But I tell you, he's suffering. Give me that phone. What's the big idea? Well, you better come if you know it's good for you. Yeah, and make it snappy. All right. What's the address? 319 Burton Road, in the Heights. Yeah, upstairs. We'll be looking for you. Yellow heel. Oh, come on, Jack. It's okay, I'm all right. Don't go off in a tailspin now. Okay. Here, let me get it. Yeah? Hasn't been there, huh? Yeah. That's what I said. Well, if he shows up, let us know immediately. Okay. Nothing there, Mike. Nothing doing for county. Yep. Any luck with the governor? No reprieve. Did you get Reed? No. I plugged him, but he got away. Nothing doing there either, Mac. Funny, no news from the hospital. Maybe he hasn't shown up for treatment yet. Any clue, Tubby? Yeah, we found his car all right, in a ditch near Burton Road. And there was blood on it, too. Did you say Burton Road? Yeah, why? Reed used to run a roadhouse in that section. Mac, I bet I can find him there. Give me a car and a couple of cops. Tubby, Brown. Wait here, honey, will you? Mac, take good care of him. Say, Al, get Doc Sully on the phone. Tell him I'll pick him up on the way. Dr. What do you Sully? want with Sully? You shot Reed, didn't you? Somebody's got to keep him a lively talk. You big sap. I got here as, as quickly as I could. Um, he's in here, Doctor. Well, you took your own sweet time getting here, didn't you, Doc? Not at all, Jack. Just had to be careful. Didn't want the police following me. Don't worry about the coppers. Just worry about me. Don't forget. It'd be darn embarrassing to you if Marsh found out how you got his watch charm. You were well paid for the job. Yeah, but I didn't expect a dose of lead from the coppers. I'm sorry that happened, Jack. Sure you are. But it calls for a new deal all around, don't it, Doc? How do you mean? Let it go. We'll talk about that when I get on my feet again. Yes, of course. I... Let's see. Can I help, Doctor? No, no. You would better wait in the next room until I finish. Is he all right? What happened? I tried, but the wound was too near the heart. He's dead! No, no! I did what I could. The best thing now is to wait till morning and have him buried quietly. No use getting into trouble. Come on out, Reed. We got you covered. Looks like we're too late.
What is it, Sully? Something strange here. I'll get the car and... Oh, I just went out to get a bite to eat. Did you find Reed? No, he got away. Oh. And Kirk couldn't get a reprieve. Mm. Why don't you appeal to the governor? Are you going to let Marsh die just because your wife loved him? No, because he killed her. But isn't there enough doubt to give him a chance? I'm sorry to refuse you, old man, but it isn't up to me to interfere. Oh. Your reward, Doc. That's a lot of money, all right. <laughs> At least it is to me. But I'm so sure that Marsh is innocent. Now, if I'll do that, you can give me a chance to find Reed. Well, go ahead and find him. What good will it do me to find him if Marsh dies at six o'clock? Hey, Matt, look what just blew in. Hello, Julia. I want to see you. But I want to see you too, copper. You're just in time. I want to find Jack. I'll show him to you. Right on his back. Dead. Oh, I got him, eh? Yeah. Why didn't he stop when he was told? Where is he? What do you want to know for? You're not going there. No? Why not? Because I'm going to give that lead back to you. Hey, give it up! <laughs> I got a knife! Try to pump me off, eh? I'll get you yet, you dirty I'll rat! I'll fix you for this. Mac, where's Sully? I'm going to miss that execution. Sully's not back yet. You got a nerve. What's the good of wasting time? Reed's dead. You can't make him talk now. No, but I can make her talk. You can, huh? Yes, and I can jail you for attempted murder. Hold oh, everything, Mike. I got a new angle. What is it? What a break. Julia, what doctor took care of Jack? What difference does it make now? He's dead. McKinley killed him. Because he'll be moving on, Sally, if you want to be in time. Oh, wait a minute, Doc. I might need your advice. Come on now, Julia. What doctor attended Jack? You're asking me to squeal on the man who tried to save Jack's life. That's just it. McKinley didn't kill him. Then who did? The doctor who operated on him. You mean the doctor who attended Sure, him? he murdered him. Oh, that doesn't seem possible. Certainly not murder. Yes, Doctor. I made a thorough examination. I'm quite sure. Could that happen, Doc? Could it? Doctor might accidentally kill a man, but not deliberately. No doctor would do that. Say, Doc, you operated on Reed, didn't you? Yes. You? Why, that's impossible. Did you kill him? Did you? Unfortunately. <laughs> but it was purely an accident. <laughs> the unfavorable conditions, the haste, and, uh, and no help. I never would have taken the risk if you hadn't begged me, and if I hadn't been his friend. Friend? Did you know about this friendship, Julia? The doctor did tipped Jack off that you were after him. Oh, so you tipped him off, eh? I telephoned him, <laughs> yes. Why? I didn't think it was right to use him as a pawn, merely to save a guilty man. You mean you were afraid Reed would talk? What was there he could tell? That he stole Marsh's watch charm and turned it over to you. Tyndall, you killed your wife. I did? Are you crazy? You knew about the affair between Marsh and your wife, and you let it go on while you made your plans to frame him. McKinley, do you believe this nonsense? Of course not. I just like dirty stories. Go ahead, Kirk. You planned it all. The ribbon on the window. The one set of fingerprints. Go on. I like to hear you theorize. Who knew about the watch charm? Who suggested a way to trace the fingerprints? How about it, Mac? I can prove my innocence. Make him prove it before it's too late. Come on. All right. Go ahead. I will. And so will Mrs. Ward and Dr. Goodman, who swore that two minutes elapsed between the time I left the apartment and the time the radio was turned on. That's right, Kirk. They did. Only my wife could have turned on the radio. And to do that, she naturally had to be alive. Come on. Mrs. Ward testified in two minutes. Now, let's see how accurate her guess of time is or anybody else's. Al, take out your watch. Mac, I want you to tell me when two minutes are up. You too, Miss Marsh. You too, Duffy. Ready, Al? Start. It's 
stop. No, no. Now it is. Are you crazy? Now, what was her guess? 24 seconds. And Duffy? 42. What? And Mac? 57. So much for Mrs. Ward's two minutes. Why, it wasn't even one minute. If it was only one second, what does it matter? The radio was not turned on until after I had left the apartment. Mac, what's the number of that all-night radio station? 575. Get away. You fooled us with a little radio trick, and I'll show you how it's done. First, you strangle your wife. Then you turn on the radio. Then you leave your apartment. In the hallway, you meet Mrs. Ward and Dr. Goodman. The radio tubes are cold, so they hear nothing. Then Mrs. Ward asks you about your wife, and you say she has a sick headache. You keep on chatting. They never even suspect that your wife is dead. The next minute, the radio comes on. There. Hear it? Hear it? The tubes begin to warm up. And Mrs. Ward and Dr. Goodman hear it. And they think just exactly what you want them to think. Then at that very moment, your wife turned the radio on. Oh, what nonsense. Wait a minute, we've got you, Doc. Hold him, Duffy. No, you don't. Sit down. Brown, you get the warden on the phone and tell him to hold everything till he hears from the governor. Al, you call the governor and ask him to grant a stay of execution. Tell him Tittle is now batting for Marsh. Put the cuffs on him, Duffy. Well, Doc, it looks like you'll get to a hanging yet. Who knows? Well, if you're going to chew, chew. Do you want me anymore, Mac? No. Forget it, kid. And keep your chin up. Did you get the warden? Yeah. Will they hold it up? Until he hears from the governor. Governor says he'll grant the stay. Call him back. There you are. I'll never cease being grateful to you. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Well, from now on, you'll worry about what to do with him. Say, what the... He's a swell guy, Miss Marsh. That's right, build me up. He'll amuse you, but he won't make you happy. Don't marry him. Oh. What's the big idea? Well, I'm awfully sorry. I never thought. I've been so upset or I'd have mentioned it. You see, I'm... I'm engaged. Engaged. Oh. My fiance, Lieutenant Carter, is away with the fleet. Oh, I hope you. Oh, now that's all right, Miss Marsh. Now listen, you, you you better run home and get some sleep. Now we line this thing out, and maybe you can see your brother this afternoon. Huh? Oh, thank you. It's all right. Oh, uh, and thank you too, Mr. McKinley. Brown, will you will you see Miss Marsh home? Sure. You know, you're awfully sweet. Thanks. McKinley thanks you, too. Do you know? You're awfully sweet. I ought to take a sock at you. <laughs> All right, Doc. Let's get going. Come on. Hey, what's that? Well, he's passed out on you. He's dead. Suicide. Well, how could he with everybody looking? Maybe the chewing gum. It might have been poisoned. Well, what do you think of that? Call the coroner. Well, kid, where do we go from here? Wisconsin, Wisconsin 70026. Wisconsin 70026. Hello. Hello, Daisy. This is Kirk, the vagabond lover. Listen, Daisy, I'm giving a swell party tonight, babe. Yeah. Can you get a friend for my friend McKinley? Okay, baby, we'll be right over. Where are you gonna get the money for the party? My half of the reward. Listen, Kirk, I tore that check up. Your what? You see, I wanted to be a good fellow and to do that. Right. There's only one thing wrong with this country. What's that? They shot the wrong McKinley. My pal. You said it.